Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-affirming, welcoming, old Catholic faith community of the Independent Catholic Church of the Americas. I am also the Chancellor of the New England Diocese of the Church, with parishes in Rehoboth, Massachusetts, Fall River, Massachusetts, West Warwick, Rhode Island, New Haven, Connecticut, and New London, Connecticut, and nursing home ministries in Massachusetts, all over Massachusetts, up in New Hampshire and Vermont, Rhode Island. We cover nursing homes and we visit shut-ins all over the New England area. And today, we are going to be discussing and reflecting on the readings for the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And I've entitled this reflection, To Whom God Has Blessed, Those Whom God Has Blessed Should Share. Share. How often do you think of sharing what you have? The readings for this Sunday hold a message that we all too often fail to remember, especially when our lives are facing difficulty or when a loved one, especially a person younger than we, passes away. The evil that befalls people is not God's desire, but is the work of the evil one who is attempting to separate people from God as he separated from God because of his desire to be equal to Almighty God. The Book of Wisdom has this following passage. Death was not God's doing. He takes no pleasure in the extinction of the living. He created all. The world's created things to have health in them. In them no fatal poison can be found, and hell holds no power on earth, for virtue is undying. Yet God did make man imperishable. He made him in the in image of his own nature. It was the devil's envy that brought death into the world, as those who are his partners will discover. You can find that in Wisdom, the Book of Wisdom, chapter 1, verses 13 through 15, and chapter 2, verses 23 and 24. The last line of the reading from Wisdom reminds us of karma. The theory of karma is a fundamental doctrine of Buddhism. This belief was prevalent in India before the advent of Buddha. Nevertheless, it was Buddha who explained and formulated this doctrine in the complete form in which we have it today. As we can read in the Book of Wisdom, the basic tenet of karma exists in Jewish traditions from early times as well. Karma means that what you do in life will be returned to you tenfold. In other words, it is the result of our own past actions and our present doings. We are the architects of our own fate because God has given us the ability to make choices. We can choose to live our lives in accord with the teachings of Christ, or we can listen to the temptations of Satan, who tries to cause people to be separated from God, just as he was separated. Often the evil that people do is at the direction of Satan will be returned to them eventually. The evil that do, we do is often returned to us. So the best thing to do is don't, you know, always try to do good. Always try to see how you can do the good thing, the right thing, the correct thing. And the, same, the people who do good things
get repaid. There have been some television shows that point out this lesson, one totally based on a person attempting to reverse their karma was entitled, My Name is Earl. I don't know if you ever saw it. But this guy kept going around trying to reverse all the negative things that he had done. The other show, and the one I must admit I am brought to tears by watching, is Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, where people who have had some difficult times in their lives but have always tried to be considerate of others are given a brand new home that is usually 10 times better than what they had. Or another, I don't know how many of you watch Ellen DeGeneres. You know, Ellen gets these letters from people saying, oh, this, that, and I'm terrible, and my husband's got this. And anyway, they're sad letters. They're always sad to listen to the letters. And Ellen turns around, and she sends them tickets or invites them to the show. And then she turns around and she says, this is what we're going to do. And a team go out and totally remake the house and give them an all-new kitchen and this and new furniture. Or they get a brand new car. Or they get a check from Target or somebody for, to help them get clothes for their children. That's good. And maybe that's why the Ellen DeGeneres show keeps winning all these awards and keeps getting renewed year after year because she exudes good. Oprah Winfrey did the same thing. In fact, many people are copying that sort of thing. All of a sudden, all kinds of people are giving away all kinds of things. And that's a good thing. Their share, share. If God has blessed you, then share the blessing. Sunday's second reading is from Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, and it reminds us with these words. You always have the most of everything, of faith, of eloquence, of understanding, of keenness of, for any cause, and the biggest share of our affection. So we expect you to put the most into this work of mercy too. The Lord Jesus was rich, but he became poor for your sake, to make you reach rich out of his poverty. This does not mean that to give relief to others, you ought to make things difficult for yourself. No. It is a question of balancing what happens to your surplus now against your present needs and the needs of others. That's how we strike a balance. As scripture says, the man who gathered much had none too much. The man who gathered little did not go short. That's 2 Corinthians 8, verses 7 through 9. Paul is telling us that we should share. Not to the point, don't give away everything to the point that it's hurting you or depriving you, but give of the excess. That's, that's what it's about. Paul also reminds us that if we do share now, there may come a time when we are in need and those we shared with in our good times will now be in a position to assist us. Again, that's what karma is. The Gospel of Mark tells the story of how Jesus raises a dead daughter of a Jewish official named Jairus and heals a sick woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. Both of these people had faith, faith and trust in God and Christ. Faith is the key to miracles. It's the key to have miracles happen. And we will be rewarded by God, just as Job was rewarded for his faith and trust in God. Job did not allow the terrible things that Satan did to turn him away from God. 
he was rewarded with the return of everything he lost and in tenfold, a hundredfold. Death, war, famine, plague, earthquakes, fires, floods, all the terrible things that happen are the work of Satan, not God. Wisdom reminds us, God created all the world's created things to have health in them. In them, no fatal poison can be found. In other words, Everything that God created was good and has a reason for being. You've heard me tell you that before. It's not something new. I'm just telling you for the first time. The evil in the world is the work of Satan. And how come, we might ask, how come Satan's been able to get such a stronghold that answer is easy because po people have given up and forgotten God. Look around you. Churches are closing everywhere because people aren't coming and they can't afford to keep them up. Can't afford to keep them open. You have to have rent, electric you have electricity, you have heat, you have repairs, maintenance. All those things cost money. And if the people aren't coming and they're not tithing, giving 10% back to God, how are they going to keep, how are you going to keep things open? It's a constant battle with every denomination in the face of the earth. And people also have tried to eliminate the mention of God. You can't have the Ten Commandments here. You can't say, use, say God in the Pledge of Allegiance. You can't, all of these negative things, trying to eliminate God from everything, and many people have given up. They, they'd rather go shopping on a Sunday or go to a basketball game or a football game or uh, whatever than to take not even an hour and go to church and communicate with God and with your fellow members of your faith community, sharing unified with God, to God, and for God. The evil in the world is the work of Satan, and it's there because Satan is definitely trying to discourage us to turn us away. He doesn't want us to love God, to trust in God, to have faith in God. But that's what we must do. If you don't have faith, you don't have trust. Bad things are going to happen. The good thing happens when we believe, when we hold on in the worst of times to loving and caring for God. It's our lifeline. It's our safety net. Don't, don't let go of it. Hold on to it. Because when you do, good things will happen. Until we meet again. I am Father Bob Janine, and I, I, I hope that this message has reawakened, if you lost it, your trust and faith in God. Again, until we meet again, I am Father Bob Janine, and I invite you, please, please, visit our website, www.missionstsergius.org. And learn about our ministry. Learn about our church. 
and learn about how you can become an active part if you so desire. May God bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love. Pax Bonum, the peace of God be with you. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.